the next topic is pliers I use pliers for aligners quite actively I use them almost to every single patient every appointment the pliers I think is the only way to influence uh, on the correction with the liners with braces we can change archwise we can bond somewhere we can rebond we can bend with the liners we just could make some kind of uh, uh, a, a planning of the aligner, alignment aligner series and give it to the patient with pliers we can correct the aligner just to more guided tooth movement as we see fit so I ordered the uh, pliers were from my own design I ordered them in Pakistan so these are my uh, personal design of the pliers I ordered two types of pliers I like better the pliers on the left side so these are the pliers with a, a vertical active surface if we see the researchers about the biomechanic we can see that uh, the inclination of the crown will be more intensive if we would add this kind of indentations dimples in the aligner so the pliers is very important instrument in the hands of the orthodontist working with the liner I can tell you before and I'm not working with some other pliers that can to do cutouts there are thermal pliers these are not thermal pliers those are simple pliers that mechanically deform the liner creating so uh, certain notches inside them first of all why do I need it I need to apply it to add additional retention when you make the notch for example in the area of the upper pillar of in a uh, palatal and buccal side we can get a much more level of retention for example the patient has problem with it for their rotations I often use pliers uh, the main uh, indication for using the pliers is correction of the rotations when we're talking that that all the time with aligners teeth are moving with a slight delay maybe 15 20 degrees the teeth are tagging behind the clean check so these kind of negative attachments these kind of notches and dimples is very good uh, is a very good uh, uh, possibility to compensate this lagging so when we have possibility uh, to do uh, I have to do the rotations in more than 10 15 degrees I would add this kind of uh, correction on the liner and ask patient even if he finished the wearing of the liner I will ask him to wear a liner at least two three days so my activation could work out the main thing is not to have too much pressure not to uh, make the hole in the liner for mesial distal rotations you see we place these dimples on opposite sides when we do the dimples for derotation it's very important to place them uh, very close to the proximal contacts uh, the more further you will go for, for the uh, center from the center the better would be uh, it's working for the rotation for the my uh, momentum of rotation if we want to have tip in that we place from a palatal or buccal side one or two notches we don't have to um, do extreme activation because in case of bigger activation we can have watermelon seed effect and the teeth can go in intrusion the same we do and if we want to have palatal tipping if we want to have tipping without rotation just to tilt the tooth palately we just add two notches on the aligner surface on the buccal side also we could use pliers for mesial and distal uh, rotation of the crown 
for that we are placing the certain areas these notches as it's described in the picture we want to get more inclination of the crown so we add from the opposite sides closer to the active part of the aligner active part of the aligner is the one the part that is more thicker so in the upper th uh, third of the aligner we add these activations activate activation points and we have more influence on the tilting of the crown in a mesial or distal direction torque is the moment and it crown torque is the moment that i don't believe that you can get with a liner uh for a sufficient uh level my uh, experience shows me that five seven degrees is the maximum capability of aligners but without these notches in the uh aligner in these liners called power ridges those who do aligners by themselves in maestro 3d they called negative attachments without these things we could not get influence on the crown torque that's why that's how we put these uh, notches very high closer to the gingiva just to try to to change the torque of the crown and of course in the program on our setup the crown this crown has to be programmed at the same with distal and mesial torque we place our activations this time closer to the ginger area if we want to try to do bodily moment translations then so we do quite uh, a, a big activation in the middle of the crown and in this cervical area the same from the palatal side if you want to get the translation to the buccal direction Uh, so we place two points, one on, on top of each other, one on the middle and one closer to the cervical area. In theory, this will produce more bodily movement. The same is for the mesial and distal uh, attempts to do bodily movement. Just to get more pressure uh, on the liner in the as uh, in certain areas, so we'll do more activation in the cervical area and in the middle of the crown, so the tooth could move more bodily. The same with the distal direction. I don't like to do notches for the distalization and misalization, I try to do it with attachments and elastic forces. So elast elastics, I think this kind of notches could create too much a strain a stress and the liner would not completely fit it on the teeth that would uh, also influence not enough uh, distalization or mesialization of the teeth so if you start working with the liners i recommend to use your plies for the, uh, ad, uh, adding retention and for helping in big rotations and the final block